You are not going to believe this. Taki Carlson was spotted at the so-called presidential elections in Russia. But wait, it gets better. It was a cardboard cutout of the popular American TV host. This is footage from the Siberian city of Tomsk. Why, you ask? Most people probably don't even remember, but a little over a month ago, Carlson visited Moscow and interviewed Vladimir Putin. Are we having a talk show or a serious conversation? <laughs> Russian propaganda still hasn't managed to calm down. Not often can one spot a US citizen in the Kremlin, especially one like this. He would have interview Tucker. Uh, this interview of Tucker is beautiful. The best journalistic work in the whole history of journalism across all of humanity. It's the most popular interview in the whole history of journalism and in the whole history of the existence of the genre of interviews. Margarita Simonyan, one of Russia's top propagandists, actually said that Carlson's interview with Putin was the best piece of journalism in history. If her standards are that low, no wonder she still considers herself a journalist. Hi everyone, my name is Valeria Ratnikova and you are watching Fake News, the TV range show in which we combat Russian propaganda. In today's episode, we will look at how Taki Carlson became the new center of attention of the Kremlin propagandists. Don't worry, I am not about to turn this episode into an analysis of the infamous interview, so you can rest easy. I won't subject you to this pseudo-historic lecture. It was in the 13th century. Now I will tell you what happened later. The Kremlin propagandists were absolutely starstruck after this interview. Thanks to Carlson, Putin's side of the story will finally be heard in the West. It was called a breach of the information blockade by people that let their own journalists go to prison. Here is an example of how propagandists used Carlson. When the interview was released, most people pointed out Taka Carlson's overt softness when questioning the Russian president. To be honest, I thought he would behave aggressively and that he would ask me so-called uncomfortable questions. Not only was I ready for this, but I was waiting for it. One of the things that bothered people was that Carlson didn't ask a single question about the mass murder of Ukrainian civilians by the Russian army, such as the Bucha massacre. One of the most odious Kremlin propagandists proclaimed this lack of serious questions a slap in the face of the BBC. Obviously, because he claims that mass murders in Ukrainian cities were staged. Tucker Carlson gave the BBC a slap in the face. When questioned as to why he didn't ask anything about Bucha, Carlson answered with a joke, that he didn't work for the BBC and Bucha was their project. Correct. Bucha is a cooperative project between the intelligence services of Great Britain, the SBU and the BBC. The point is simple. The SBU killed hundreds of Bucha residents because they took humanitarian aid from the Russian army. Afterwards, the bodies of the killed were picturesquely scattered. The news that Taka Carlson does not think that the Russian army committed a massacre in Bucha went viral among Russian propagandists. Of course, they forgot to mention that the source of this information is a satirical news website that publishes humorous fake articles. But unsurprisingly, to the Kremlin propagandists, such articles are a voice of truth. An important disclaimer about the Bucha massacre. Multiple independent investigations proved that the Russian army was responsible for the brutal killing of civilians in Bucha. Satellite imagery showing murdered civilians is available for anyone to review. The authenticity of these images has not been refuted. And one more thing about the war in Ukraine. When Taki Carlson returned to the US, he suddenly came out and said that denazification, Putin's reasoning for starting the war, was the dumbest thing he'd ever heard. I thought it was one of the dumbest things I'd ever heard. I didn't even understand what it meant. Denazification? With such contradictory statements, this American that Russian propaganda praises so much can make his fellow countrymen utterly confused about Russia and its moral image. He's an American. He doesn't understand much, but he listens. This is what differentiates him from the others. 
Like Carlson is now well known even in some of the remotest Russian regions, because the Kremlin propagandists won't stop talking about him even to this day. When the American TV host visited Russia, the propagandist turned into paparazzis and treated him like a superstar. Propagandist websites wrote about his every move. They literally caught and interviewed him in a parking lot. Can I ask you about your uh, interview with uh, Putin? With who? With Putin. Who is it? <laughs> I've heard the name, but I... With our President Putin. Yeah, I... it sounds familiar, but I, I don't. I can't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, though. Oh, that... You, you walked me into a corner. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, let's play a little game. Russian movie theaters announced that they were offering free screens of which of the following? A. Barbie B. Oppenheimer C. Napoleon or D. Tucker Carlson's interview with Vladimir Putin And the answer is, of course, D. I watched this film with great desire and a deep admiration for our president. I, I mean, I liked it. To be honest, this is the second time that I'm watching this interview, very carefully. It's always good to be reminded of the history of our country, our great country. This yet again proves that our country is the greatest. Who is Taki Carlson? Now some Russian children know too. School curriculum in Russia often becomes propaganda as well. In several Russian schools, children were shown an interview with Putin and then given a quiz. It was called From Russia to Russia. The school children had to answer questions about the background to the so-called special military operation and US sanctions against Russia. It was the United States that led the genie out of the bottle. One of the main state-owned TV channels even launched a joint venture with Carlson where they agreed to translate his interviews with various guests for the Russian audience to watch. This is how the creators spoke about their project. Russian24 presents a joint project with Carlson TV, interviews with American opposition leaders and activists. It is clear why Russian propagandists like Carlson so much. They use him to say, look, Carlson is an American and he is on our side which, thanks to his crazy guests in their minds, shows that most Americans are on their side. To ensure passage of the Ukraine aid bill, you need some idea of how to sell this to voters and politicians. The idea is that Ukraine is the force for good, and Russia is Hitler, Mortar, etc. But it's everything we don't like, so it undermines this concept that it's Mortar or Hitler. This made Carlson into an authoritative voice. His statement on the death of Alexei Navalny in prison in the far north gained widespread attention among propagandists. It could be Ukrainians, because it would benefit the war. They killed Dugan's daughter in Moscow. So, yeah, that's possible. The fact that Carlson was allowed to visit the Kremlin and interview Putin was already a sensation. But when an American journalist says that Ukraine might be responsible for Navalny's death, well, that just made them ecstatic. Many of the Russian propagandists themselves wouldn't have the goal to actually accuse Ukraine of killing the leader of the Russian opposition. So let's look at the news feed of the Russian news agency TASS and search Carlson. These are the results from just the last few days. Carlson claimed that Facebook and Google are more of a threat to the American people than TikTok. Well, for Russians, this is really important news. Carlson claimed that the anti-Russian sanctions make the U.S. look bad in front of other countries. Carlson claimed that Biden is bringing the U.S. to the verge of war with Russia. Carlson called Biden's statements on Ukraine senile nonsense. Carlson believes Biden cannot win in a fair election. Wow, any PhD candidate would be jealous of these many citations. Tucker Carlson is now used as a punchline by any trustworthy international news agency. But let's watch some Russian television. 
А ведь при этом согласитесь, вряд ли просто так Белый дом именно сейчас опровергает. Have a subway station that normal people use to get to work and home every single day that's nicer than anything in our country. Zinalova, of course, didn't forget to give her well-informed opinion on Alexei Navalny's death. She said that Western media jumped to the conclusion that it was the Russian government that killed the opposition leader before the results of the coroner's examination. Well, did the Russian state media wait for these results? Let's take a look. Within hours of the first reports of Navalny's death, Margarita Simonyan cited some unknown source claiming that Navalny suffered a blood clot rupture, which led to his death. I wonder how could Simonyan's source have possibly known that without an examination? Thank you for watching this episode of Fake News. My name is Valeria Reitnikova. Please give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. And I will see you next time for more insanity.